over tooth decay. Procter & Gamble announces Crest Toothpaste with Floristan, its exclusive fluoride compound, world's greatest weapon against decay. Look, Mom, no cavities. Former employees of Occidental Chemical Corporation have filed a lawsuit against the company. They say they have life-threatening diseases like leukemia, emphysema, and toxic brain syndrome. For years, doctors struggled to diagnose them, but finally they found a common link. It was fluoride. It's a byproduct that they can't do anything with. It's a poison, so they sell it. You allow industry to use your water supply to dispose of their hazardous waste. It was a scam from the get-go. It is a means of getting rid of fluoride. It's a disposal mechanism. It's bizarre. Fluoridation is the worst recycling practice in the world. So, you're Alcoa in the 1930s, a giant corporation that makes products out of aluminum. And honestly, you've created some pretty amazing things. Tea kettles, foil, airplane parts. But one thing that sucks about manufacturing aluminum is that it's a super messy process. Because guess what? Raw aluminum doesn't come all perfect and soft and ready to be molded into a frying pan. It needs to be chemically processed and broken down. And this chemical process produces a lot of highly toxic chemicals like ammonia, methane, and fluoride. And we're not talking about the natural fluoride that occurs in caves and stuff. We're talking about an artificial, man-made fluoride compound that is way more toxic. Like, really, really toxic. Hydrofluorosilicic acid does not occur in nature. It's a man-made molecule. And it eats through concrete, glass, stainless steel, fiberglass, plastic. You name it, it'll eat it. The problem is, it would be super expensive to dispose of this toxic fluoride in a safe and responsible way. So, it's a 1930s factory owner to do. Hmm. Why not pipe it into the air or, or dump it in the river? I mean, come on, it's the 1930s. This is the dawn of the industrial age. No one cares that factories are dumping toxic chemicals into the river. No one even knows what the long-term effects of these industrial waste chemicals are. They're too busy making up for prohibition or whatever people did in the 30s. So as the years went by, you continued to flood the rivers with this fluoride waste. And everything was going fine and dandy for decades until things started to go south. See, you've been dumping fluoride into the air and water for over 30 years now, and people were starting to notice. Alcoa factory workers were showing symptoms of poisoning from the fluoride gases. Cows from nearby farms were getting really weak. They couldn't even stand on their own anymore. And local dentists were starting to notice strange brown stains and chipping on the teeth of children who live nearby. Fluoride is starting to get bad press. And if that bad press continued, everyone would start connecting the dots to you and your fluoride river dumping frenzy. And if that happens, you're gonna be buried with expensive lawsuits. It would be the end of you. So if you wanna survive this and thrive, then you gotta do something drastic. You gotta find a way to change the public's perception of fluoride from this toxic poisonous chemical to something that's good for you. And this, this effort to rebrand fluoride into a healthy chemical would be one of the greatest propaganda efforts known to mankind. It's why today, fluoride has seeped into everything. It's in your toothpaste. Chemical? You're gonna put some chemical in my mouth? Tap water, table salt, bottled water. Yes, Crest can really reduce cavities because only Crest has Fluoristan, an exclusive Stannis fluoride formula that protects your whole family chemical leak this afternoon in Rock Island. The chemical was so strong that it was burning through the concrete there. It was just before one o'clock Thursday afternoon when hazmat crews were called to the Rock Island water treatment plant for a chemical spill coming from this tanker truck. The chemical hydrofluoral sicilic acid is used to add fluoride to the plant's water. After several hours, crews were able to clean up the leak, allowing operations to return to normal. Uh, the treatment of the water and the, the amount of water uh, you know, being used by the public, there's no effect on that at all. So why are we putting that in the water? The United States, Canada, Australia, Ireland, and New Zealand generously provide you with the fluoride in your tap water free of charge. Why? Because it's good for you, they say. It's good for teeth. It prevents cavities. 
to say things like tobacco is harmless, fluoride is harmless, Agent Orange is harmless, they say, DDT was harmless. Asbestos, right? Yeah, GMOs now, they say, are harmless. There's a long history of science selling out to corporate interests while the people are systematically poisoned. And to this day, people still believe fluoride is safe in the drinking water, and the majority of dentists still believe it's safe to put in toothpaste and to put in different types of compounds. When in reality, too much fluoride has been connected to brain damage, skeletal fluorosis, bone cancer, and lower IQ in children. What we did was we exposed them, let them drink the fluoride in the water for six to 20 weeks. The pattern that we saw, it typically is what we see with other neurotoxic agents that are well known to cause a hypoactivity or uh, a memory problem or an IQ problem. When I first presented the results of these studies, one of the individual sitting and listening to the results. He says, do you have any idea what you're saying? And he says, you're telling us that we're reducing the IQ of children. And yet, the government won't let you escape it even if you wanted to. It's a city, it'll kill you. And it all started because Alcoa didn't want to get sued. Welcome to Evil Food Supply, where we expose all the evils of our modern diet. Subscribe for more, and this is the evil history of fluoride. If it's such a simple issue, how is it that it's still going on after half a century? Fluoride is safe and effective, and it's one of the most inexpensive ways to really cut down on dental decay. Fluoridation of community water is extremely safe and extremely effective in preventing tooth decay. Science is on the side of fluoride being safe and effective. There is no controversy about this in the scientific community. The newest beer can tops have ring tabs made of aluminum from Alcoa. Now beer can All of the music and sound effects you hear in this video came from Epidemic Sound. Epidemic Sound is this incredible, royalty-free music and sound effects platform where you can download unlimited music and sound effects for your videos. They've got over 35,000 tracks and 90,000 sound effects for you to choose from. And they're the only place we get music from. And finding the perfect song for your content is super easy. You can filter by specific genres like cartoon music or crime scene music or even pop music from the 2000s. You can get that specific. And it's the same thing with sound effects too. Music and sound effects are the easiest way to make your videos feel way more high quality. And Epidemic Sound has the best selection. Pause the video and try it out now with the link in the video description. That's Epidemic Sound with the link below. America prepares. All America alters its pattern of life and work to meet the demand for protection. Industry is a double step to supply the sinews of safety. The armaments of war that an embattled world must have if democracy is to survive. In the early 1940s, the US launched a little something called the Manhattan Project. But to make an atomic bomb, the US would need uranium and fluoride. But not just a little bit of fluoride, we're talking tons of fluoride. Hundreds of tons, actually. Luckily, the U.S. knew just the affordable place to get all this fluoride from. American manufacturing factories like yours. As the head of Alcoa, you're all in, obviously. So you sign on the dotted line, turn your engines to max, and start producing as much fluoride as you possibly can. And other factories across America do the same. And at first, this seemed like a really good idea. I mean, hello, this is the stuff you would normally dump in the river, and now you're getting money for it? Plus, Uncle Sam needs us. America needs us. We're being patriots. But shortly into your war effort, things start to go downhill. The toxic gases from all this fluoride production was making your factory workers sick. 
sometimes even killing them. Chemical burns were showing up all over their bodies, including their eyes, throats, and esophagus. Fair-skinned men were leaving the factory with burnt red faces, which is why you made sure to only employ African Americans inside. Constant gas leaks and explosions would literally burn workers to death. One woman named Gloria Porter said that she saw a man get, quote, eaten alive, end quote, when a tank of hydrogen fluoride gas exploded in a factory in Cleveland. Another man reported that the fluoride dust would land on cars outside and dissolve the paint on contact. And even though they were working with highly toxic chemicals, all you gave these factory workers for safety equipment was a rag to put over their mouths. You gotta love the industrial age. Between June 1945 and October 1946, 477 factory workers were either injured or died from chemical-related accidents in these fluoride factories. And word was getting out. These factory workers lost their lives because of the poor working conditions you set up. Their families could sue you. In fact, they're probably talking to lawyers as we speak. And if they do sue you, your whole business and your life's work could go down the toilet. But luckily, there's one convenient benefit to fluoride that you can use to turn all this fluoride panic around. Cavity. Cavity. It is a decay fighter dentist use. A decay fighter dentist put on teeth to prevent cavities. Preventive medicine for teeth? For fewer cavities? Can't be done. It has. Now Gleam's done it. New Gleam's put preventive medicine in a toothpaste for fewer cavities. What preventive medicine? It's Stannis fluoride plus Stannis pyrophosphate. Gleam tastes great. No toothpaste fights cavities better. Preventive medicine for fewer cavities in new Gleam. I said it could be done. Back in 1901, a scientist named Frederick McKay started noticing a strange brown staining on his patient's teeth. This brown staining came out of nowhere and was only happening in his town. No other towns in the area had it. And this was pretty weird. So Frederick did some investigating and discovered that the tap water in his Colorado town had absurdly high levels of fluoride in it. I wonder how that happened. His patients were walking in with these ugly brown stains, but they also had no cavities and rock hard teeth. And this wasn't a typical thing at the time. In the early 1900s, tooth decay was a really big problem. Teenagers were getting fitted for dentures. Soldiers were failing their health exams. There was even a lucrative black market for false teeth. But this fluoride thing, this fluoride thing was great for making your teeth stronger. It prevented cavities. Now that is something that we can work with. Now all you have to do is propagate this message to the masses. You know, honey, I think it just could be the crest. Of the five leading toothpastes, only one has fluoride. Only crest, the cavity fighter. The great thing about this fluoride disaster is that you're not fighting this alone. The government also had their head on the chopping block for encouraging factories to pump out even more fluoride. So you and the government were on the same side. And with the government in your corner, anything was possible. So here's what you did. First, you hunted down that dentist, Frederick McKay, the guy who discovered that fluoride hardens teeth. And then you use his research to back your case. And you even give him better technology so he can finish his study faster. Might as well support the guy, right? And then you present his study to cities all over America, saying that if these cities added fluoride to their tap water, it would prevent cavities. And guess what? They drank it up. Wanting to put a random chemical into everyone's water supply may sound crazy today from our point of view, but remember, this was around the end of World War II. Americans had just defeated Hitler. They defeated Japan. They saved the world. And after winning such a vicious war, 
back home, they naturally became overprotective. They wanted to protect the masses from everything, to prevent bad stuff from happening ever again. So adding fluoride into the water supply to protect people's teeth? Why not? We can't trust them to take care of themselves. So it was no surprise that in 1945, Grand Rapids, Michigan, signed up to be the first trial city, the first city in the world to have fluoridated water. And after just six years, you found out that the fluoride actually worked. Tooth decay did in fact go down. Pretty soon, other cities start getting excited about fluoridation. Because who doesn't want clean, white, shiny teeth? Fluoride was successfully a positive thing right in front of your eyes. However, the true genius of this master plan was that the more cities you get to dump fluoride in their water, the less of a chance you'll get sued. After all, fluoride is good for you. We've actually been doing America a favor. And when scientists come forward and question you on the safety of fluoride, like Kai Roholm and later on, Frederick McKay himself, you simply pump out more studies that refute them. You open a lab at the University of Rochester that's dedicated to the study of fluoride, and you fill it with the researchers from the Manhattan Project, just to keep it in the family. You even start your own academic journal on tooth decay called Dental Caries and make fluoride the star. The naysayers were no match for your expert propaganda. And by 1955, Crest releases a new product that would be the last nail in the coffin for fluoride's new positive public image. Crest toothpaste with Floristan, its exclusive fluoride compound that's far superior to fluoride alone. The world's first fluoride toothpaste. And they actually started working with the fluoride and did the original toxicology studies. And they described what happened to some of these people when they were accidentally overexposed to fluoride. <laughs> Mandrake, have you never wondered why I drink only distilled water or rainwater? By the 1970s, fluoride had become a beloved household name. And sure, there were a few fringe conspiracy theorists who would say that fluoridation is part of a communist plot to turn us into brain-dead atheist slaves, but luckily, you have almost every dentist in America to back up your fluoride claims. I mean, it does prevent dental decay, doesn't it? And do we really want to go back to wearing dentures made from donkey teeth? Ew, no. Of course not. So pretty much everyone in America was on Team Fluoride. But you're still not totally in the clear, because there's one little scientist, one little rat, who's doing everything she can to dismantle your fluoride lies. And her name was Phyllis Mullenix. Dr. Phyllis Mullenix started her career at the University of Kansas with a PhD in pharmacology with a specialty in neurotoxicology. It was 1982 and Phyllis had just started her new job at the Forsyth Dental Center in Boston. Her mission? Testing the toxicity levels of different chemicals, including fluoride. And so, she went through the usual motions. She fed fluoride-laced water to rats and observed their behavior. And what she saw was kinda terrifying. The pregnant rats who were fed fluoridated water were giving birth to hyperactive babies. They were also mentally slower than the rats whose mothers weren't fed the water. Phyllis also noted that male rats were more easily affected by fluoride in the womb, whereas females were more affected when they drank the water later as young adults. And what's interesting about this study is that it aligns with another study that was published in Canada in 2019 where the male babies of human mothers that drank fluoridated water showed signs of a lowered IQ and hyperactivity, while the females did not. There was no question that behavior was vulnerable to fluoride. Whether you got a very short exposure, and this in animals, if, you, if, you're, if they're young, if it's prenatal, or if it's early postnatal, all you needed was two or three days exposure to this. And it caused a permanent change in behavior when the animals grew up. Phyllis got pretty excited about this. So excited that she typed out a whole paper and submitted it to the Journal of Neurotoxicology and Teratology. What she didn't know was that she was being watched. 
by none other than Harold Hodge, the head researcher of the Manhattan Project. Yeah, he was still alive at the time. And Hodge was really not happy about this nonsense on the toxicity of fluoride. Sure, he was super old now, but he still didn't want anything to ruin the sparkling clean image of fluoride that he worked tirelessly to build. Plus, if people find out that fluoride really was toxic, then he would definitely get sued or go to jail. And so would all the other companies who poisoned those workers during the days of the Manhattan Project. To top all this off, the dental center also didn't want this paper published because they're being funded by pro-fluoride organizations, and that would be a huge conflict of interest. So yeah, this meddling lady needs to go. So what do you do? You corner the rat and threaten to fire her if she publishes the paper. And what did Phyllis do in response? She published it anyway. After Phyllis turned in her lab coat, she found out the truth on who this Hodge guy really was and why he was always hovering over her experiments at the dental center. It can reduce decay, and 5,000 kids like these help prove it. No toothpaste fights cavities better than new gleam. And gleam tastes good. What do you know about fluoride in the water? Um. It, it's it's in the water to prevent tooth decay. It's a good thing, Rhett. That's what they want you to believe. Of, dude, the fact that you can't drink water out of a river anywhere. Stop right there. You know what? Fluoride protects your teeth and it's perfectly healthy for you. Well, if Jam says that, then he is a lying idiot. And if you believe it, then so are you. Fast forward to today, and fluoride is still a really big household name. And anyone who questions it is instantly labeled as a conspiracy theorist of Alex Jones' standards. <laughs> and anyone who brings up fluoride to Congress gets questioned. You cited several studies, um, which were very interesting. I, are these are these basically uh, independent studies with no peer review, or have the, has there been sufficient peer review uh, to give these these studies more credibility or not? But the reality is, fluoride is a double-edged sword. On one side, it is a miracle for your teeth. But on the other hand, too much of it can cause a whole bunch of disorders and diseases. And the scientific community has been fighting over this for decades. Phyllis's study was criticized for using too much fluoride in her water at five parts per million. Whereas the US government's recommendation at the time was one part per million. But think about this. Just because you mix fluoride into the water supply at one parts per million doesn't mean that's what people are actually consuming. What about all the food products that are made with fluoridated water? Raisins contain fluoride at 2.34 parts per million, wine at 2.02 .02 parts per million, and black tea at 3.73. Is that when I drank a Coke, when I drank Snapple tea, when I drank grape juice, that I was really adding to my body burden of, of fluoride with all these others. The American people, and especially our children, are getting way too much fluoride. Two thirds of children living in fluoridated communities have dental fluorosis in at least one tooth. Dental fluorosis is the visible manifestation of toxic overexposure to fluoride during their developmental years. And let's not forget the undisclosed dumping of fluoride by factories into the water and air. So that one parts per million turns to two parts, three parts, four parts pretty fast. With fluoridated water at four ppm being found to cause bone fractures and skeletal fluorosis in children. It all depends on how much fluoride you actually consume, not how much the government dumps in the water supply, which is next to impossible for the average person to calculate. And I'm sure you're wondering, why aren't we all passing out from fluoride poisoning every time we brush our teeth or drink a glass of water? Well, it's because we're consuming fluoride in super small doses, like a poison drip. And every time we drink it, our system filters some of it out, but not all of it. One study showed that only 50% of fluoride gets filtered out of the body. So where does the rest go? It gets absorbed into your bones. And according to Phyllis, it also absorbs into your brain, one drop at a time. Gross! Gross fights cavities, so I'm gonna fight Gross! Now, Chris got four 
fluoride in it. And fluoride is far from the only questionable thing in our modern diet. Next up on Evil Food Supply, we're going to expose today's artificial meat industry and how they've hijacked your compassion for animals to sell you fake meat made out of cheap, profitable synthetic chemicals. Click the card on the screen to watch now or subscribe if it's not out yet.